Hello and welcome everyone to DAP Radars Off The Blockchain. I'm your host Charlie and I'm back in the hot seat after two weeks away. Thank you Ian for filling in in my absence. Uh, what a difference a fortnight can make. Uh, the, the clouds are brewing on the horizon, darkness and fear appear to be creeping into our world. But luckily for us we have Ian Kane, a man who's always looking on the bright and sunny side of life. <laughs> and we have Robert Hogendorn, someone so passionate about Web3 that Thunder wouldn't dare come near. <laughs> we have an interesting show lined up for you today. And always remember, you can catch us on Spotify as well as YouTube. So if you're on the move, go on Spotify and we're on there. But on that note, what we're going to be talking about today, uh, the bear market is turning a bit grisly. We'll be touching on what's happening over there. And we'll be looking at what opportunities are out there as token prices drop. Uh, Rob will be, giving, will be giving us a demo of World Wide Web, a cool project currently creating some pretty cool things. And more companies keep jumping aboard Web3. It looks like now is the time to get involved while the world is looking elsewhere. Everyone's heard the phrase, bear markets are for building. But this seems to be a lot, very true for a lot of organizations. Um, we'll also be having another round of show and tell where we talk about some of the interesting projects that we've got our eye on at the moment. Um, this is not advice. Do not go and necessarily buy them. We wouldn't dare give advice in today's world. But they're things that we think are quite cool at the moment. Um, we'll also be having a little showcase of DAP Radar's new NFT Explorer. But before any of that, and I feel like I haven't spoken to you properly in ages, how are you both? Ian, I'll go over to you. How are you doing? You're looking very cool in that T-shirt. I've got my Ray of Sunshine T-shirt. Yeah, on. the sun god. <laughs> today. I'm doing really, really good. Not for crypto reasons, perhaps, but uh, yeah. I had some a win involving my car. Basically, I fixed it and saved a whole bunch of money. So I've been smiling ever since Monday about that. So I'm in a good mood, man. I'm good. I'm happy. Good man. It's the simple things, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Rob, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine as well. I, I'm not very good at fixing cars. I'm, <laughs> Me neither. I'm, I'm literally not very good at, at anything physical besides walking and yeah, playing sports. But uh, yeah, no, life is good, man. Like I'm, I'm sweating like crazy because it's crazy hot where I live. And uh, uh, crypto, crypto sucks. So now you... you uh, you cherish the little things, and uh, uh, yeah, I will. I will tell a bit about that uh, in the show and tell section. I actually had a funny phrase on Twitter the other day. It was um, "play to earn's done, so's move to earn." Now it's all about work to earn. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Who knew? Who yeah. knew? <laughs> I think we're going to be going back to the yeah. tr traditional ways. <laughs> yeah. That's a great well, actually, there's, there's a very good um, uh, a coin project that's that's connected to work to earn. It's called USD or Euro. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> they, might, they, they, they might they might become something or they might go down. I don't know. From what I heard, the earning potential is pretty poor in the old central in that world. So you know you might want to stay away from that. Oh okay okay. <laughs> All right. So there was there was a there was a how are you trying to, in two weeks, like you said. How are you doing? Oh uh, well, do you know what? As long as it's sunny in London, everyone's always happy. Um, yeah, blue skies. Um, I'm actually a bit too hot, if anything. The windows are open. Got some <laughs> new little cats. So, yeah, life's good. Um, I'm nice. trying not to look at my um, yeah. my Coinbase wallets and things like that. So, it's fine. For the best. All right, let's move on to our first show and tell. Rob, I'm going to go to you because yours is quite a cool one. So, we'll let yeah. you talk to that. Yeah, okay. So, I'm going to show you uh, my screen for a little bit. Um I've been I've been in the Clonex project, so I got this Clonex NFT character um, because I have that er that character. Um, so let me go here. So because I have the Clonex NFT character, I got airdropped a monolith chest, and I, I didn't want to open it for a long time because I felt like yeah, you were scared, weren't you? Yeah, <laughs> like I always have bad luck, literally. Like I always when when I have, when I unbox something, I always have like the, the least rare item you can find. Yeah. So I was like, no, it's better to keep it to keep it close because then you always have the potential of <laughs> you know, finding something nice. Schrodinger's yeah. NFT. No, yeah. Then, then what happened is, of course, crypto went went down, and I was like, yeah, this is not nice. Like, you know, checking my CoinGecko uh, app every day. So I was like, you know what? I will just open it. Maybe, just maybe, I will be happy. Yeah. What do you find in that box? You will get 
three NFTs. One of them is the Artifact Nike Dunk Genesis shoe. This is the one every, every, uh, everyone gets in, inside the monolith. Everybody also receives a monolith too. There's another surprise box for a future project. And everybody receives a skin file. Now these skin files is where, what it's all about. This is like the cool stuff. And well, crypto prices are down, but finally, finally, I got lucky. So uh, I, I got a reptile uh, skin file. And I will now, this is the shoe. So you, you have the, the, those my crypto kicks. You, you like not really put the skin valve in, but that's a little bit how, I, how they present it. So over here. Uh, in the tongue, yeah. Yeah, in the tongue of the shoe, you see the, the skin valve. And uh, that basically, basically changes your shoe. And right now you have one skin valve, so you can change your shoe, in, this, in my case, in a reptile, in other cases, in a human uh, human or a robot or demon, uh, whatever. And down the line, you can add multiple skin files so you can, you can level up your shoe. And that's kind of cool uh, because uh, even further down the line, you will be able to, to what they call forge it. That means redeem your NFT for a physical shoe. So this technically can be my future sneaker. And yeah, that's pretty cool. And that's, uh, cool. That, 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 that's a small thing that made me happy. Oh, that's really good. Know you've got that other box there for the next bear market. So I know that's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Keep, keep that one for the next cycle so you can pop him open when it all goes down the toilet. Yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Rob, when's that going to be open for or available for reveal, that next box? Dude, I, I, they never reveal dates. It, it just okay. happens. It, it might, might be next year. It might be next month. Uh, the most recent ones. The, the one that you never know. Because I remember until it opened, it kept like pulsing more and more, didn't it? Do you it yes. Like it, yes. It was kind of they, they, they had this entire, it... yeah, they had, had this entire community review party yeah. where the community needed to solve puzzles. So in my case, it meant other people solved puzzles, and I just you know, waited. <laughs> but, yeah, you didn't contribute. Not really. No. no. <laughs> I, 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 I liked I liked stuff on Twitter. Does that, does that yeah, count? yeah, you kind of counts. You're you're communicating and you're marketing. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right, Ian, let's move on to you. Dustland. All right. Uh, I'm going to start my timer as well because uh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to try and nail this. Okay, so uh, this week I was looking at a DAP called Dustland, which is in the move to earn segment of DAPs. Now, when I first saw it, it looked more like a play to earn game. So I was quite surprised to jump in and find out what it was all about. So what's the premise? It's about they've got two different modes, I guess you can call them. They've got Dustland Rider and Dustland Runner. And basically the idea is that you go for a job or you go for a run. And you're accumulating uh, distance and you're accumulating points. But the cool thing about the running is that it's, it has a narrative. They put a narrative to your jog. So you put your headphones on and you'll be listening to music, which is like a movie score. It's intensifying. It's, it's becoming mellow. There's people chasing you from behind and they become more audible as you're, if you slow down, they get closer. The further away you get, they, you know, fade away. So it's like you're involved in this kind of like movie scene and the premise of it is just fundamentally exercise, but with a narrative. And I really like that because mm, that's I, quite cool. Yeah. I'm a lazy guy. I don't like, I find the gym so boring and the whole idea of going to the gym just sucks for me. And when you think about, so that's the premise of it basically. And it's free to play. Um, and as I say, they've got runner and they've got rider. So whether you ride your bike or you like to jog, you can participate there as well. You can get it on Google Play. You can get it on the App Store. They do have a token called Doze Token, um, and you can get into the tokenomics of it there as well. But like I say, you can play for free. So, yeah, it's pretty cool, and I like the idea of that. And what I really like is the narrative. I think that's, that's cool. Like having monsters and ghouls and ghosts chasing you on your jog is, I don't know. I've not tried it, but I think I'll get into that. Yeah, it does make... Um moving around a bit more fun if you're not into exercise in the first place That's at least at least it sounds better than a woman saying something like you're doing a good job yeah <laughs> yes you you're losing that body fat keep going awesome <laughs> so uh, i'd rather be chased by, by monsters is that the nightcap <laughs> rob no wrong keeper all right that's, all right uh, that's from that's from essex but you can imagine like scenarios where they import like IPs, you know, like uh, famous running away scenes from movies. Like, I don't know, for two minutes, you're 
I don't know. I can't think of one two, now. Two, min two minutes Terminator 2 uh, uh, mo motorbike scene. Yeah. There, that's the one. Yeah, see, stuff like that. That could be so cool. Like, you're actually part of a movie for a few moments and earning some tokens and getting fit. Pretty cool. So, yeah, check it out. It'd be quite, cool if, they, it'd be quite cool if you could take some pictures of your face and then, like, sort of superimpose them onto the <laughs> avatar. And you're basically this character in a movie. Making Yeah, so, so you're running with your phone in front of your face. Oh, yeah. Behind you, that like AR wise, they're like monsters. Oh. <laughs> it's a bit like Pokemon because yeah, I guess Pokemon Go. Okay, that could be kind of cool, but yeah, man, like fitness with a narrative. All right, nice. Yeah, I might get involved. I, I knew about it, but you're making it sound quite. You're selling it to me. Ian. I'm selling it to you. Sorry, you <laughs> somebody sold it to me, so now I'm selling it to you. All right, um, I'm going to go on to the thing that I've been looking at for the last couple of weeks. Um, it's called for the culture. It's kind of a successor to Goblin Town, but they care even less about what people think and about, or they pretend to care less about what people think. Um, they did a free mint, but people got back 0.1 ETH for their gas fees. Um, the NFTs, which I think we'll have up on the screen in a bit, they look like kids' drawings. Uh, and the whole thing is based on just not caring at all. So the Discord channel looks like a 4chan thread, basically. Um, <laughs> and anyone, but anyone who minted for free and then listed or swapped it List, list it below an ETH or swapped it, uh, swapped between wallets during that time, during the burn period, they got their NFT cancelled. So it just said game over on their NFT and they couldn't, it became like basically worthless. Um, and that, but now if you have two of the NFTs, you can go onto the For the Culture website, you can burn one and upgrade the other one and you get a Gen 2 one, which at the moment, unknown utility, they haven't been revealed yet. Will they look better? Uh, we'll see. I, I'm going to say no. Yeah. Yeah, my guess, my guess would be no. Yes, it would be fun though. Like the first, the Gen One drawn by a four-year-old. Yeah. Gen yeah. Two drawn by a ten-year-old. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, these. You know, these NFT collections come out and they say they haven't really planned it. It's just come from nowhere. But maybe they've been thinking about the whole roadmap for ages. They say there isn't a roadmap, but maybe there is. But yeah, maybe Gen T, Gen Two is going to be like a ten-year-old, and then it's going to be an older teenager, then an adult. Yeah. Again, so just want to point out that you were the one who described it as a four-year-old's drawing, and when you say that to them, they'll be like, "Hey, these Gen Ones were our finest effort." <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, have you seen them, Ian? Uh, yeah, I think we looked at them last week or week before. They do. I think I compared them to those tea towels that your kids bring. Home. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, for the culture, check them out. They're sort of hovering at a certain price at the moment, but. They say there's more stuff to come, so we'll see. Right, so that's show and tell. And now I want to move on to the big topic of the week. Um, it's not a particularly happy topic, but it's the the bear market that we're currently experiencing. Da, 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 da. <laughs> it seems to be going from bad to worse, but we are going to find some glimmers of hope amongst the darkness. So let me just give you a few facts before we start. Um, ETH is hovering near $1,000. Um, that's down about 45% in the last week. Bitcoin's just over $20,000. That's about a third down in the last week. Uh, Coinbase just laid off a fifth of its employees because it said it grew too quickly in the bull market. Um, Celsius seems to be following in Terra's footsteps. So these are just some of the bigger signals that shows that things are going quite badly. Um, and the current prices at the moment of... Um, <laughs> Can you hear my cat? Keep, your, keep your cats on the control, yeah. Charlie. Go, go, away, go away, Stevie. <laughs> um, and also, yeah, the, it's, the, the crypto bros are kind of being proved wrong with the uh, Bitcoin and decentralized currencies apparently being a hedge against macroeconomic conditions, but they're being affected by the wider world. So, you know, inflation's up, productivity's down, there are wars going on, people are unsure about what's happening, oil prices are going through the roof. So everything's down at the moment. But... We've seen this before. Ian, you've lived through one of these before already. <laughs> I'm a survivor. You're a survivor of the <laughs> previous bear market. Um, people say yeah. that what's happened in the past is going to happen again in the future, so we can expect it to go up. Do you think that's necessarily the case? Nobody can say that, man. Like I, no. I, I, I would, I would prophesize that that's the direction that we will head into because it seems logical given metrics and data and analytics, but nobody can say that 100%. I think... This time around, the cycle will look differently because will look different. Sorry, because of the 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 industry has changed a lot. The 
the, the mechanics of the industry have changed a lot. Everybody is now, it's a stack of dominoes fundamentally, as I see it in, in, in crypto right now, where things are falling and they're taking everybody down with them. And that wasn't the case in 17. It was literally just like massive overselling and, and fear mongering. Now it's, we're getting knock on. So yeah, as a survivor, I guess, like you said, we've seen this all before. Um, I believe we will go back into another bull market in an, in the next few years. Yes. This is the time when when people learn their lessons. This is the time for me when you started talking about Ethereum and Bitcoin being down like 40%. I'm like, bye. <laughs> like that's yeah. me. But that's me. That's me. That's how I think. And maybe because I've been in it longer. But um, it's about choosing the projects that you believe in. And if you haven't got the time or the inclination to go and do the research, there's a couple of strong contenders out there that have shown their their metal. Ethereum, Bitcoin. So, yeah, there's always option. Don't get sad about it. It's a good opportunity. <laughs> That's what I would say. Yeah, I, th I think there's also a point to be made about Web2 versus Web3, right? I mean, Celsius, Web2, very Web2, um, trying to dive into Web3 functionalities, but basically it's a Web2 organization. You, like, you, you put your money away in a bank to, uh, to get yield. You, you, you don't keep control so it's like suddenly people were closed off uh, and couldn't remove their money yeah that's that's fundamentally not web3 and uh, like this, this this stuff would maybe also happen if celsius was was completely web3 but then it then celsius would be gone now that, that, then there is no life saving and uh, celsius has been has been uh over promising with money that they didn't have, and uh, yeah, they now they now eating dust for that. Or how, how do you say that? I know they they, they now they now um, well, they're they're, they're, reaping they're like, the rewards. Uh, yeah, but there are no rewards, of course. But in a boom yeah. market, it works, right? Like yeah, it's it's keep going up. Yeah, but it's always it's easy in a boom market. Yeah. It's easy because you put money in, and two months later, it's it's. It, it multiplies. And you think you're Warren Buffett, yeah. But it's and the people it's the same, same for Celsius, right? The way that their operations were, they're in a boom market, it's easier for them to deliver yields. It's easier. And if yeah. they don't see the problems on the horizon, because we saw this a few weeks ago with crypto.com slashing rewards. Now it's the same thing. They had to do it to maintain service levels. It looks like Celsius just didn't react fast enough, to be honest, and tried to ride this optimism or whatever they had but but this, uh, but this is also again like a warning for towards consumers right i mean when when a company promises incredibly high yields then if those yields don't quickly stabilize to a normal level for example when you have yield farming uh, uh, stuff yeah then and, and the yields remain high then, then it's the higher the yields the higher the risk yeah and like if if you get five percent somewhere that's already very good um then that's yeah then that's far more um seems far more sustainable than, than when you get 10 20 percent yields there's also like the greed of, of i think over the last sort of 12 months we saw people perhaps maybe like us who advocated crypto and blockchain to people that maybe didn't understand it very well but we would say things like you know you can get six percent savings over here you can get 10 percent savings on your stable coins so we are pushing for adoption and in doing so we you know we sometimes perhaps it's not always the right way like it's great to have millions of users onboarded into crypto.com but at what expense now they're all burnt people will they ever come back i hope so but you just need to be i think it's a lesson to the industry to be a bit more cautious and careful and to slow like what do they say the rabbit we don't want to be the rabbit we can be the tortoise yeah, so, yeah. No, and for anyone who has maybe lost a bit of money, as long as they haven't lost too much, it's quite a good learning curve at the moment to see that, that yeah, these things don't go up constantly and constantly and keep going up all the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I look at the first, uh, my first bear market was, of course, 2017, 18. And like, I, I lost considerable amount of money in there during that time. And uh, yeah, I should have cashed out, didn't. I was like, it will go back up. It will go. It will go. It will go back up. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, like, you know, what are we? Like, three, four years later, like things turn out okay. 
even yeah. even like the stuff that I had back then. But um, yeah, no, it's 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 uh, like it is it is a learning curve, and I, I don't want to say yeah you need to go that you need to go through it because that's not the way it's supposed to work. No, but but in this like let's call it wild west. Um, uh, yeah, it, it is it is it is a very good initiation. Let's put it like that. Yeah, and at the moment, the ones that are still building and the ones that are still making stuff are still putting out an actual good product that's not necessarily always just linked to speculation and cryptocurrencies. Right. They're maybe the ones that people should start latching onto and being like, right, they're they're here for the long haul. They're not just here for a quick buck. Exactly, man. Like you, you look at trading volumes and things of tokens, and that's what stimulates prices. You've got projects that really don't, you know, you've got like Radar, for example, as a token. We're building the product underneath Radar right now. So it's undervalued because we're not at the point where we want to be, but that's where we're about to go. So, yeah, like you say, it's better to look at projects with long tails. Yeah, like we're not a hype project. We're building something with a token yeah. attached, not a token with a product yeah, attached. Not we're not trying to burn it every week to jack it. And like, it's a long-term vision for us yeah. it's the same with other companies like Uniswap, you know, they're the leader in, in decentralized exchanges. So do we see them just disappearing? I don't think so. No, but no. you never know. You never know. So. So we're leaving that on a cautiously optimistic note that brighter days might lie ahead. <laughs> I think we will. We, we have to think positive. And, and yeah. from, a, from our perspective, things are positive. Dapps are up. Prices are down. Who cares? We're DAP radar, not token radar. Yeah. DAP, DAP usage is, is is buzzing. Some of it caused by selling activity, but overall the utility of the decentralized applications is being found and it's up. So and there's one area that's done really, really well this year that we keep talking about is gaming DAPs. So Rob, you want to speak to us about World Wide Web because yeah. gaming so DAPs aren't there for people to make money, they're there for people to play, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Like in 2021, we had um, Facebook Meta announcing their move into the metaverse with uh, uh, whatever the name of their, I think it's called Horizon or something like that, with, with, with their virtual world platform. Um, al alongside that story, like lots of those virtual worlds on the blockchain, like the Sandbox, like the Central Land, like uh, various others, saw that token prices pump. Uh, lots of hype around those uh, around land sales. Uh, everything was going great. Now, of course, token prices are down. People are worried. Uh, will my will my land ever uh, regain value? And I think uh, it's important to know that like those teams, um, and I mentioned the sandbox and the central land in particular, but also Somnium Space, also Crypto Voxels, like they they have been building for years already. Like they, they're not, they didn't like start in summer 2021. No, like they, they've, they've been building for two years. Like they have, they have uh, uh, big teams working on a, a working product uh, that will either release pretty soon or has been released in beta right now or alpha or whatever early version um, or is live in development. Like they, 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 there are people building and um, you know, metaverse builders, like the metaverse won't be there uh, as, a, as, an, as, an, as an online environment like it, it will change it will develop and yeah it will grow i up. think yeah and, and so what i find very interesting is that the whole concept of uh, gaming worlds or metaverse worlds um don't don't see it as like you don't want you don't want to flip it you want to buy it and then like start living in those worlds mm. participating and potentially earning something from it so one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm kind of excited about is World Wide Web, and that's the one I want to I want to show. Um, like it's a um, pixelated uh, 2D virtual world. Reminds me a bit of uh, uh, Pokemon mixed with RuneScape. Uh, True been told, it looks a little bit shitty. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Oh, I love it. But like if you if you if you're expecting like sophisticated 3D graphics and uh, and and uh, all kinds of lightning effects etc., uh, then no, you're you're wrong. So this is me. You can't the red shadow there. So they've they've nailed that. That works. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm, the, I'm the red cat. But the cool thing is, this red cat is my NFT. It's my moon cat. So this dude is also an NFT. I don't know. I don't know which NFT he is. Can you take any NFT that you've got in there? No, 
there's a selection. So the, the developer of this project, uh, he, he creates partnerships, sets of partnerships, yeah. and those partnerships determine um, uh, which NFTs are workable. But you know, if you have a CryptoPunk, uh, Bored Ape, uh, a Larva, what is it called? Um, like those, now, not Larva Labs, but Larva Guys, I don't know what they're called. But oh, they're like, they're like, oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, you know, you know which one I mean. <laughs> but they're, they're like 40 or 50 uh, NFT partnerships, and some of them can work as your playable character. Others Lots can work as, 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 Yes, thank you, Larva Labs. Others can work as a pet, and you can walk around with your, as your NFT character in this, in this world. Right now, this is like for uh, an early version for landowners only. Um, what, what will happen soon is that, uh, everybody's apartment will open up and apartment own owners, they can, uh, uh, they can customize their apartment, people can visit. Um, within the customization options will also be the, the potential to add um, yeah, content creation tools. So you can, for example, be a blacksmith, so to say, or uh, uh, a clothing maker or whatever. And those NFTs that you create, you always uh, uh, have secondary, uh, secondary, what's it called? Uses? No, uh, the, you, it's being sold and you, uh, royalty, yeah. That's oh, right. Right. yeah, so, yeah. So, you, so you get royalties over that as, a, as an apartment holder. Is it, is now, it, well, there are the players in here in the same instance as you, is that how it works or is this there's like? Only, there's only one instance. There's only one instance and everybody dives into the same thing, right? Yes. Like Somnium. Yes. Okay. Yes. And what's this? Just one little area of the whole planet. Uh, and this, this is just a really small portion because this is, this is just the, uh, the beta version with some test options. But what's very cool and what I like a lot is that as a landowner, you will be able, able to add your own mini games. And right now they uh, will make your own mini games, I have to say. And right now they added one mini game. And this, this big monkey standing in the fountain is, is a cyber con. And um, they added a very cool feature where you play this game called Web Defenders. So you go in and you, let me give this a try. So you go in here, you, uh, you start playing Web Defenders. And if you get the high score, uh, if you defeat uh, the monkey, then uh, you, you will earn a share, a fraction of the ownership over that uh, NFT. So you will earn a share of the monkey. So the monkey's been sharded and yes. divided into how many pieces? Just like a, is there like a set amount so that only a certain amount of people win, or how does that work? Yeah, there, there, there's a limit to it, but I think what what happened now because this is beta, so it's not it's not 100 live yet. What they will do is if you if you finish, then um, uh, you will end up on a score on a sheet, and everybody who finishes it eventually will get a uh, will get a shard. So right now they, they kind of play around with it, but in the future they want to have a system where you know, like this boss can be divided in ten thousand fractions. Good luck, uh, community. <laughs> so no, nah, whatever. Uh, drone. And you said that. So Rob, is it right? Like with the Cyber Kong, somebody, a landowner, had a Cyber Kong NFT and decided to create a mini game using the IP of their Cyber Kong. Is that what you mean? No. Uh, no, this no, 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 no. This in this case, the developers just bought a cybercon and decided. And I think there's a there's a partnership with cybercons. So right, the, the cybercons that enter this world, and you can win can, uh, part of it. They can they can actually walk around with their uh, with their cybercon. Yeah. Got it, got it. Got and it. I need to. So I need to. Right now it's kind of slow because I'm still. I hate these kind of games. Where everything surrounding you like <laughs> gives me high. <laughs> No, wait. This, this will be fine. Oh, my okay. God. Oh, God. Here they come. Here they come. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, look. So now, now that's an upgrade. Uh, okay. I will add additional projectile. That seems kind of useful. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, uh, yeah. We're basically just watching Rob play a game now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know what? I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to cancel this now. Uh, let me close this here. So, and now I'm out. Hey, See how easy Rob can get. Play by gaming. He's just like right. Yes, playing, yes. Right? I, I also forget to talk. But <laughs> okay, so you forget you're on a podcast. You just think you're playing a game. But ultimately, like you know, so my, my, my ultimate point is like these these metaverse worlds they're being built. Yeah. Uh, right now, so like, in one or two years, they will be completely fleshed out. Uh, 
uh, we're still super early with these metaverse worlds, whether it's the sandbox, whether it's NFT worlds, whether it's World Wide Web, uh, or, or, or anything in between, some in space, crypto voxels. There's still so much development happen, happening in those products that um, you know, diving into those and seeing which one you like, and uh, you know, maybe if you're a designer, or maybe if you're a, uh, an artist, or a game uh, game designer, oh, you can, you can participate in those. Uh, yeah, yeah, content. you can. Yeah, and you can add your content. I would definitely like if I if I had those types of uh, such a background, um, I would find that interesting. Mm. So my advice is uh, you know, dive into the metaverse, see see where the touch points are with your passion, and and, and try to participate. Cool. Thank you very because much. Now now is the time to participate. Not to, yeah, definitely. Not, the time to not, get not to buy, not to sell. Just um, maybe sell, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah. but, to, but to, to participate, to build, to join. Yeah, um, and from a few individuals maybe joining in and adding their content to the metaverse. Well, we've got big brands jumping into NFTs and putting their content on the blockchain. Ian, yeah. what's happening there? Yeah, I mean, this is a trend that's been happening for quite some time, but we kind of wrapped it up this week and looked at some of the biggest companies, brands that people will know about that are getting involved with NFT fundamentally. At this point as well, they're making announcements, which is, again, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Builders going to build. This is the time. You know, they're not scared to talk about NFTs at a time when the markets are down because they also believe in it as well. So. A couple of the companies I wanted to highlight. Um, number one is a company, this is a new announcement called Salesforce. So if any of you out there work in sales, you'll know what Salesforce is. It's basically like a CRM management platform for um, account managers to deal with their sales pipelines. Now they want to allow customers and users to mint NFTs. And it doesn't sound, it sounds like a bit of a weird relationship, like Salesforce, NFTs, how would they be used? But one thing that's interesting here, I think, is that for salespeople, they often use incentives to seal the deal, right? If you're trying to make, you, you use a make weight, so you might offer some free stationery or something pretty crappy, to be honest, to kind of just seal the deal. They also offer tickets to events. They offer things as incentives. So moving forward, Salesforce staff can actually utilize NFTs to incentivize their deals and their customers. For example, they could give tickets to an event. Um, and they could, and it just kind of checks, flips things on his head a little bit about how sales is done, I imagine. But that's its first sort of objective for Salesforce. So we'll see more come out. As but time would, if they were trying to sort of give people a a, a gift for being, you know, doing sales with them, yeah, that other person would need to have a, a wallet, wouldn't they? A crypto wallet. Oh and, yeah, yeah. That's, Not everyone. That's kind of the downside and the, and the upside, right? So you've got the downside of the onboarding process being a bit laborious, but the upside is that if the Salesforce team want to utilize this, which they will, they'll have to roll out education for their clients and customers. So in the end, you might see easy to use wallets. Who knows? It's moreover, the point is that it's a huge brand with huge numbers of people launching an nft platform for minting so it's pretty cool yeah, buying into the space basically and making it bigger yeah. and more more mainstream definitely and then second one just to draw attention to is nike so nike i think everybody knows who nike are um they announced the acquisition of the uh retract retract i'm not sure how you say it studios oh um, artifact art no rtfkt studios yeah yeah, yeah. it's pronounced yeah. artifact <laughs> but I can see what you mean because they've, the they've, they've done that really cool thing where they take out all the vowels. <laughs> Took out all the letters that made sense. Yeah. So yeah, they basically acquired this brand, which for Nike is pretty weird because they don't acquire brands. They stand on their own two feet. They have done for a long time. It's not something they've really done. But yeah, they released these. Um, so in collaboration with the studio, they've released these crypto kicks. So they came out in April 20 this year. And then I think they released the Space Drip Nike Air Force One shoe as well, which was another one. So it's like eventually over time, I imagine these trainers might become redeemable for physical world items. Should be pretty high value. Very limited edition sneaks. But this is Nike jumping into NFTs. More so think of it from marketing perspectives. As I usually talk about with NFTs, it's... It's from that angle, really, for them. Yeah, it's just really, really good advertising for them, isn't it? And yeah, pretty it's another, much. another channel for them to put their stuff out. 
exactly and then like rewarding customers as well you know that's a great thing they've got a running application for example why not reward people with nfts through night you know it, or with tokens way, even. yeah the way it works can can be infinite really and then the last one another huge name and a name that supported nfts for quite some time openly is samsung um they actually have a device with a dap browser built into it and they've openly supported nfts and crypto for quite some time actually but they're releasing this TV, a smart TV with an NFT um, <laughs> viewer built into it, which can access metadata, blockchain metadata. Really, really smart TV. It's a pretty goddamn smart <laughs> TV. But the the crux of this, I was reading the fine print earlier, and yeah, so it's a picture viewer, all right? It's a photo, photo viewer for your television. That's yeah. what it really is. And they hooked it onto the NFT uh, bandwagon slightly, I believe. But... No, nonetheless, do you need to connect? Do you need to connect your wallet? It doesn't give much detail, and the the line of televisions is not so much released at this point. So I don't know how so it. An NFT viewer, yeah, it's just an image viewer, basically. It's you can image see viewer, pictures, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a, it's, like, again, these, if all these companies are all going towards trying to make this part of their product, then it's just going to get more and more people it. accepting it and being like, "This is mainstream now. Yeah. NFTs aren't weird; they're just part of, you know, like the internet twenty five years ago." Exactly. People didn't really yeah, trust it, but now they do. Yeah, like, yeah, these things, again, that's what we're saying. These things just help push when the mainstream audience sees Samsung jumping into NFTs, Nike, it gives that little gold seal of approval that yeah. big brands are putting their neck on the line. So we should put our necks on the lines to some extent as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Like, it's, also in gaming, you see this a lot. Like, you see lots of uh, uh, like entertainment, uh, entertainment companies jumping into gaming. So, I don't know, Supercell, does that ring a bell? Yeah. Uh, Clash of Clans. Yeah, Clash of Clans. Uh, oh, yeah, no, no, Clash no. of Clans. They have invested in a new, uh, in a new uh, Web3 game. Uh, Universal, uh, Univer uh, the big TV company, yeah. they're going to make a game, uh, um, a play-to-earn game, together with Gala Games, around Battlestar Galactica. Um, AMC from uh, the, TV, the TV company, the TV show company. AMC is The Walking Dead. We'll be working with Gala on uh, The Walking Dead Empires. Mm. Epic Game Store will host NFT games. And um, uh, the um, Japanese studio uh, Level 5 worked with, with Studio Ghibli. You know, that's, that's, that's the, the Disney of Japan uh, on a, a franchise called Nino Kuni. And that has now also become a play-to-earn uh, title for mobile devices. So all those all those brands, I, I, even in gaming, especially in gaming, actually, you might say, they're also dipping their toes in, in, in this space more and more and more and more. It's super yeah, I think, the, I think the ones that are successful are the ones that do it in collaboration with existing Web3 platforms and companies. Though. Like Nike have done it really well by collaborating, not just being like, we're going to try and make our own thing in-house because the ones that try to do it by just tacking on Web3, yeah. you see yeah, they don't it's do a bit, it the best way. Uh, to, to, to make a sort of a circle to your uh, show and tell item, it's a bit for the culture, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, like Artifacts has been creating stuff in Web3 for, for, for two years now. Yeah. Um, uh, they, they are part of the culture. They understand the culture, even though it's, like, it's, it's very subtle, but they understand it better than Nike does. So it's a, uh, yeah, it's a, but Nike is a smart acquisition. Yeah. Uh, in, 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 a, in a similar, similar vein, like, you know, gaming companies working with web three, web three gaming companies yeah that makes an awful lot of sense so that's why you know that's why gala games yeah uh, gala games are doing some of those exciting oh. things at the moment they've got that new game coming out called grit as well have you seen that yeah the cowboy cowboy Petroleum. yeah so that's quite cool it kind of looks like a bit like red dead redemption but yeah, yeah. Three. Good. like in, in a gala, gala has other partnerships like they, they work with uh, peter molyneux from fable fame uh, they work with Will Wright from the Sims and Sim City. I think I talked about it this last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, so you see, you, you will see more like established gaming studios dip their toes into Web three, despite all the negativity that's, that's yeah. surrounding NFTs. It's also yeah. like the, the 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 hype period was all about PFP collections and almost what I would consider a bit of throwaway NFT usage. It's like. Yes. People say that DeFi is like the beginner's level of what blockchain is capable of, right? Like we got sidetracked with DeFi. There's plenty more amazingly exciting things we could be building, but DeFi kind of just got 
caught our attention. And I think the same is true with NFTs. People got caught up in the whirlwind of PFP and collections. But now what we see is like the reality of it. What can you really do with NFTs in the real world, not in this sort of fictional world? So I like that. I no, love the hype that. world, yeah. 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 No, I don't agree. It would be interesting to see what they do do in the next two years or next three years when the hype die down a bit and people are like, right, what do we actually want to make? Not, not just jump on the latest bandwagon. Exactly. And things like that, I was just going to say, sorry, that movie that's coming out, The Infinite Machine, um, which I started reading about this week and is actually being directed by Ridley Scott. So this is a movie about Ethereum, its foundations, its early days. These sorts of things are also going to push us towards more acceptance. You know, this might become on Netflix or whatever. People are going to learn a lot more over the next couple of years. So I think it's... That's, cool. uh, was that based on the book that Camilla from the Defiant wrote? Yeah. Yeah, she wrote the book and then now they've screenplayed it. They haven't got the script just yet. But Ridley Scott, man. If, if anyone who doesn't know Ridley Scott, that's like Prometheus, Alien, Thelma and Louise, like the biggest movies on earth with proper fan bases. Didn't so, he do Are You Not Entertained? Yes. So, I mean, it's mad, like... I just think it could be very good for the future. Cool. Yeah, I agree. And I'm, I'd be interested to see what does happen in the next couple of years. Um, but we must, we must say that it's not only other companies building stuff. Here at DAP Radar, we have built. We are obviously continuing to build. But we just released our latest uh, tool, which is the NFT Explorer. And Rob's going to take us through it and give us a bit of a showcase and demo. It's a very cool tool. Um, yeah, have a look at what Rob shows us, but then go and check it out yourself because you can find loads of interesting information um, on it. So yeah, Rob, take us through it. All righty. So the NFT Collection Explorer, you will find it if you're on that radar, you go to Portfolio. It will open up this page or something kind of similar. In my case, this is not my page. This is Paris Hilton's wallet. Um, ah, I thought it was yours for a second. Yeah, no, no, if only, if only. But you can go here to NFT Explorer. It's one of the tools available uh, in your portfolio hub. And here we are. Now, here you can see all kinds of new collections minted on the blockchain. So, for example, Shrapnel Operators Collection. So, Shrapnel is an, is an upcoming, uh, uh, upcoming video game. And why is it loading so long? There it is. Um, you can now buy the video the, the game characters, uh, cheapest one, 0 0.0683 ETH, uh, market cap, all the, all, the, all the regular stuff, and you can see the latest high and low sale prices. You can filter on metadata, so you can say body, apply, no, et cetera, et cetera, so you can filter a bit. But this is a small collection. So this is ultimately not super, super interesting. Uh, like the more data we have, the more service we can provide. Um, upcoming collections, by the way, another feature. So if you are making your upcoming, your own NFT collection, you can submit it here. That being said, this is where the hot stuff happens. So collections, NFTs, uh, NFT, uh, individual NFT sales, and live sales activity speaks for itself. What's a lot more interesting if, if you go here to the board at Yacht Club or any of the other uh, much traded NFT collections, this is where metadata filtering really stands out. So you see here this calculator, Est it means estimated price. This is determined by looking at the metadata of individual NFTs and comparing that with the last actual sale. So let's say we grab a, um, we grab a solid gold uh, monkey. Those are clearly the ones that are very valuable. There are only 46 of them. So they're, they're pretty rare. So we apply. So now we have all the NFTs with a solid gold fur. But you know what, that we, we all, there's still too many. I want a solid gold one, but uh, not the one, not, not all of them. So let's get, let's put a head on. I want a, uh, trippy captain's head, of course. <laughs> ah, there is none. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Doesn't matter. 
Doesn't matter. Let's do the bandana blue. Is there a bandana blue? Yes. So there's one golden monkey with a blue banana. Uh, blue bandana, sorry. Uh, it has an estimated value of 656 ETH. Now, you can go to the single uh, NFT page. You, we can see it's been last sold for 30 ETH. When did this happen? Uh, this happened a year ago. So this guy or, or lady bought this uh, board for 30 ETH back then. And, and if it's now... That if you hover over that blue bit there, the blue yes. there, you can see what it was at the time. Yes. So really at the time, it was $73,000. Right now, it has an estimated value of, of $731. So 730, I can't even pronounce it. It's so much. <laughs> so <big. laughs> $731,000. So no, good, that's, a good, that's a good markup. But the point is, let's go back to... Uh, to the collection. The point is that, let's remove the metadata, that you can use the metadata to, to scroll through in a collection and get you know, a good insight into what, what's the value of a particular NFT uh, and based on what treats, uh, what attributes does it, does it have that value. So that allows you to go really, really deep and perhaps find an opportunity um, if, you are, if you are eager to, to jump in into board apes CryptoPunks, Clonex, uh, all those collections. Uh, or uh, anything else slightly more affordable. <laughs> or some, or, yes, or something. But that's the thing, right? I mean, uh, it needs to have lots of trading. The more trading activity uh, the, the, the system uh, registers, the better we are able in establishing the estimated price. So mm. if, there, if there's very little uh, trading, historical trading activity, then, then we, don't, we, don't, we don't offer this, this feature. In those cases, it will just say last sold price or floor price. So keep, keep that in mind. Uh, the more active a collection is being traded, uh, likely the value will also go up with it. Um, but only then we can provide the, the estimated price uh, through, machine, through machine learning algorithms. Lovely stuff. It is. It is. It is actually pretty cool. No, it's really cool. I, I, I use this tool every day. Um, yeah, I do my research about NFTs and looking through different collections and things like that. Worth mentioning, for now, we're on Ethereum NFT collections, and then we're going to be adding more as time goes forward as well. So all feedback welcome yeah. on the whole process. Absolutely. Like, just, just go to our Discord, uh, drop some feedback. Um, uh, we, we will add more collections. So right now you can see some of the collections mentioned here. Um, we will add more chains in the future. Um, uh, if you look at our portfolio, like right now we support Ethereum, uh, BNB chain, and Polygon. Uh, you can also imagine that uh, the NFT Explorer will also come to those chains. We, we don't, we didn't, haven't announced that yet, but um, like that obviously is in the pipeline somewhere in the years to come. To watch this space, basically. Mm -hmm. Cool. Nice. Cheers, Rob. Right, so NFT explorers, check them out, go and have a little look, do your own research and find the best deals that will go up in price in the next two years at some point, is what we're saying. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Like, Rob said, like, we didn't like say bear, that. Bear, bear market, man, like it's, uh, it's difficult. But still, like it's, it's an interesting tool to, to just use yeah, yeah. And, and, and dive into NFT collections. And no, like we, I should be showed board apes, but you can also technically do this for for virtual land for no, for other what is called other deeds yeah. um, so there are various nft nft collections not only pfps yeah so everything that is like an nft base basically yeah cool right so there we have it folks um we've discussed the upside to the downturn we saw that companies are still building despite the uncertainty um we've seen that gamers still want to gain whatever happens um so catch up with us next week at the same time on youtube or on spotify and we'll see you there. So goodbye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Cheers, all. <laughs>